Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Uh oh, it's Wednesday. No pen Wednesday. Pen. Weird mood right here. Uh, this is Run It Back FanDuel TV. My name's Michelle. That is Chandler. That is Lou. And of course, joining us because he hates us and he's far away, Sham Sharania. Is it true, Shams, that the reason you're not here is you don't actually care for any of us? No, that's not true, but we did tell you all on Monday that Joel Embiid was probably going to play on, on <laughs> Heard it Tuesday, from so. Shams. You did. And, I'm, I know. and the, it, so much so that yesterday, all day long, I thought, oh, okay, I guess he's out now. I don't know. And then the questionable pops. How up. funny is that, that NBA teams should just follow Shams for the real scoop instead of the injury report that they just last minute throw up there that the MVP is yeah, playing? Yeah, I know. I don't like the They mind. listen to the show. They would have known Monday, Shams. They know what's up. Shams already told you guys this. But yes, Thunder at Philly last night. OKC without SGA. No Maxi on the Philly side. But they did get Embiid back. Uh, 24 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, including the game-winning free throw. Um, seven games is what he's got left on his schedule to finish out the regular season. A, I'm shocked he's back. But B, how did he look? Is, is this enough time to ramp up, as they say? It's enough time because it's all he's got, right? This is the push he's going to make. It's And the, he looked unbelievable. The fact that he missed nine weeks and can just <laughs> come back in an NBA game against arguably the best team in the NBA. I know yeah. SGA was out. I know Jalen Williams was out. But so was Tyrese Maxey. So the fact that this was his first game back, he looked in there's some plays he looked a little fatigued, and that's normal. You can't emulate a game situation from practice and shoot arounds and things like that. And he had six turnovers. But, you know, the, but the most important thing for me, it just gives them confidence going forward. This gives them, you know, this feeling that, okay, this season's not just thrown away because Joel is hurt. He's coming I back. Love that. And, yeah, it's going to be a tall, it's going to be a tall mountain to climb no matter who they face because they do just have seven games to kind of get that chemistry back, play through him. But this was one of the teams that people were scared of early on with Joel. So seven games, it's not a lot, but I think with him playing 30 minutes already in the first game, I think we'll see that to continue to grow. And I'm happy for him. I mean, nine weeks only for a torn meniscus on right. that with his injury history is, is super impressive. So welcome back, big fella. I know he had the Suck It t-shirt out. It was, <laughs> it was a beautiful thing to see. Uh, <laughs> look, they're eighth in the East, Lou. You know, making out of the play-in. You're going to eventually have to have Celtics, Bucks, and any of these things could happen. And again, who knows? Mm. But what kind of chance are you giving them? Like, realistically, when yeah. you look at this team, what are we what are we? Yeah, doing? Let's, let's not pretend this guy was, wasn't an MVP candidate before he went oh. down nine weeks ago. And, and seeing what he did game one, back in almost putting 25 on the board, big time win uh, without Maxi. If there's going to be any team that can put pressure on the top that you would hate to see at the bottom of a <laughs> seven or eight, it's going to be the Philadelphia 76ers with a healthy Joel B back on the floor, with a Tyrese Maxi healthy back on the floor and being able to ramp up. You know, this is, if I'm, if I'm Milwaukee and, and, and I'm Ooh. Boston, I'm kind of pissed right now that the 76ers slid to this position only to get Joel and B back two weeks before the playoffs start. Cause you know, they can, they can get in a position where they can put real pressure on these top teams. And then by the way, whoever gets them, the other team most likely is gonna get the Miami Heat. Right. Now they have time to get fully healthy and we don't know about Tyler Hero, but now, you know, Jimmy's back, Bam's back. So seven and eight seeds in the, in the Eastern Conference, they're not gonna be an easy out. So the Boston Celtics, they've had a great year. Milwaukee's been a roller coaster up and down, but whoever they draw, and it could be Chicago or Atlanta, I don't see that happening because I think those, you know, Heat and Philly teams are really good. But with Joel coming back again, this just gives them that belief. This gives them that confidence that we can go out and we can beat anybody any given night because we have the best player on the floor anytime Joel Embiid plays. So I'm happy to see him back. I didn't think he'd come back. You know, Towns is still out. He, the fact that he's, we all didn't. It's crazy. I missed six months for a tournament. I was gonna ask, like, like, it's, 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 I, I even said they should sit him the rest of the year. It's <laughs> great. Like, it's not just like you put a band aid on it or like an injection or even like a scope. This is a real go under, fix a torn ligament. So it's crazy the fact that he's back, especially given his size and the way he plays and his age and his injury history. It's nuts. I hope he can sustain this because, again, Philly, when they're fully healthy, they are dangerous and they're not going to be easy, an easy out for Boston or Milwaukee. No, I, I, well, you know how I feel about Milwaukee. But uh, Shams, you also had some more Joel Embiid news yesterday. It wasn't just what we saw on the court. What else is going on? I'm told Joel Embiid has signed a new multi-year endorsement deal with Skechers. He will be the face of Skechers basketball. Um, he's been trying different shoe models with Skechers since October. He finally found one, and he will stick with it, uh, at least for the remainder of the season. He wore it for the first time last night. 
Julius Randle, Terrence Mann, also part of Skechers basketball. But for, for Joel Embiid, I think like Chandler and like Lou said, I mean, for him to come back, I, I knew just knowing Joel, no one knows his body better than himself. Uh, he's been through so many different injuries. He knew exactly what time would be the right time to come back. He wanted to ramp up, use these next five games to really get right. And when Joel Embiid steps back on the floor, he, he in his mind, he feels like he's going to dominate the game, impact the game at a high level. I don't think he want, he wanted to come back to this season and just be a shell of himself. So we'll, we'll see if he gets back to that place before the start of the playoffs. How big is that bag from Skechers? Sure. Skechers? <laughs> no. I'm going to assume they're I comfortable. Know. The pitcher, Kershaw, I think, he's a Skechers guy. Tony Romo does those commercials. I think, it's, yeah. I think it's time for us to get us a yeah. pair of soccer. Skechers. But once you once you go Skechers, it's, it's no going back to being cool and young. That's bro. literally the I don't know if Skechers thing. is the move after a guy with that many injuries, Why? especially to his what? lower. Skechers, his lower Skechers has a history of being a comfortable. They, they don't. They never built a basketball shoe. They do. Would they, you think that they can't figure it out? Well, he has a history of injuries. Listen, free, regardless. Free Skechers. Regardless, he's getting a bag if he's oh, going a big Well, the original Skechers. Sketchers wasn't Santa the, Claus the demo was yeah. like older people walking a lot, right? And so that they're they like hookahs or hokas. They're like they're yeah, comfy. They're, health- they're comfy. <laughs> I just don't know if I want to hoop. Soft in cushioning. Them. I mean, they got to start. Some, look, what do you think? Garbage. Really? I like the uh, color. Stop. They look comfy, bro. That's a lot of. That's, they that's are a probably cozy. Soul. That's what they're built for. He knows what he's doing. But the NBA is not comfy. It's, they need to be built for you know what? speed and power. I'm going to say it. 20 years from now, Skechers is going to be the best. Really? Yeah, yeah. No but, chance. Right, hot take. That, right? It's a hot take. <laughs> wow, so, Michelle. Thank no you. chance. Check we, back in. We, I'll be dead, but still. We got to come back to that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to that one. Sean will still be going. Producers just so put just the highlights up. Yeah. Like, all right, enough Skechers yeah, talk. By the way, this was fun. You didn't have Jamal Murray. Doesn't matter. Uh, it was a close one till the end, but the Nuggets did win 110-105. They now sit first in the West. This will just flip-flop for the next two weeks. Um, Jokic with 42-16-6. and six. And Victor Wimbanyama <laughs> finished with 23-15-8-9. and nine. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. But first, here is Jokic talking about Wimby. Did you say anything to him after that? Yeah, boy, if you block more shot, I'm going <laughs> to... Something, but he he blocked like four after that, so I didn't do anything about it. <laughs> he he had uh, translator. Do we have a tiny blocks. translator? I don't think he was stoked that Wimby blocks him. He blocked him. He blocked a lot of things. <laughs> um, but you heard that stat line: two assists and one block shy of the quadruple double. The one I'm waiting on. The one I check on every night. Uh, if you had to pick what was most impressive, I mean, he mentioned the blocks, but. It's, it's is definitely it? going to be the nine blocks. It's got to be the blocks. I think the most impressive thing was Jokic's is 46 and, and 16 and 6 and the win. But, yeah, this stat line is insane. We're talking about, are we going to do it next year? I think he might pull this off this year. Like, every well, single I'm game. I'm counting on it. He, look at 23, on. 15, 8, and 9. Think of, he's just three little stats away from getting quadruple-double, which is just insane. We never <laughs> thought we would see that again because we don't have someone with that size and that talent and that skill set to be able to do all four of these statistical categories. So the points are going to come easy. The rebounds are going to come easy. Even the assists. He's going to have the ball in his hands, but the fact that he could possibly have, you know, double digit in four different categories, it really is nuts. And we're talking about a kid in his rookie year, yeah. too, so he's going to get it. It's just a matter of when. Exactly. I don't think the, ca- the casual fan understands how hard it is to get nine blocks in a game to almost have ten, nine. and that'd be the reason that you have a quadruple double. That is the most impressive part of everything that he's done. So not only is he an <laughs> offensive threat, he's going to put himself in a position to be in the defensive player of the year conversation for years to come at nine, ten blocks. That's insane. Does that say he has more blocks than 86% of the players? Uh-huh, in history. Like, we're part. He's got more blocks than us already. Oh, yeah, of course. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Goes saying. He probably does. What do you it's mean, com- probably? It's crazy, probably man. It's, it yeah, really is. Matter of fact, he does. He I, t- I probably have 100 blocks in my career. I probably oh. have less. Really? Yes. I was a swipe Man. and get out of the way or a charge guy. <laughs> Pull it up, Lisa. Let's see how many we got. You probably got way more than you give yourself credit for. I don't think for. so, dude. Yeah, you might. I mean, you, might. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll effort that. We'll try to find out what you had. Shams, this game This game was fun. Like, I, look, I get it. Spurs are just playing for, for fun right now, and they're missing a couple dudes. But it was an entertaining game. What did you take away from it? I was texting the chat, like, I wish it went to overtime so we got a chance to see Victor Wembanyama like, go for that quadruple double. I mean, it is just a matter of time. We've been talking about it for months now. Uh, There's four players in NBA history that have accomplished it just one time. Victor Wembanyama will be the guy that we're going to think about 
as far as being the all-time quadruple double leader. I think it's it's only bound to happen as long as he stays healthy. We think about Russell Westbrook in terms of triple double king, along with Oscar Robertson before him. It's going to be Victor Wembanyama very very soon. Whether it happens this year, whether it happens in the next two, three, four years, um, and all he has to do is get get two, and he's the all-time leader. Um, and I think when I when, when I see this game and I, when I see the Spurs, obviously they're down Devin Vassell, down Jeremy Sohan. Getting talent on this team is going to be the number one priority this summer for them. Uh, their GM, Brian Wright, the one good thing that they've done is they have optionality. They have a ton of flexibility. They have a ton of draft picks. They have tradable contracts. That DeJounte Murray trade they made a couple years ago, getting three first-round picks, getting a draft swap, that's all stuff that's going to come in handy come this summertime when they really are going to have to be <clears throat> aggressive this summer, next summer to add talent around Wemby. What's really fun about his rookie season is that it's, yes, they're they're a bad team, right? But they're not, it's like they're rebuilding. It's not like they're tanking. Like they have no, the future, they have the assets, the they steps. have all these pieces. So Wemby is being able to grow as a player and as a teammate. And when you look at their roster, when you got guys like Sohan and Johnson and Vassal, these are kids that he's going to be playing with mm -hmm. for the next, you know, three to five years, hopefully, and have this core kind of continue to grow together. So it's, it's a very good situation for Wimby that he is on this team where he does get the minutes, he does get the reps, he's going to be the best player, but also there's light at the end of the tunnel where we're trying to win as soon as next year. So it's 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 a great, it's a perfect situation for him. They've been showing some good glimpses too against some pretty good teams. All right, over under Chandler on your career blocks. I, I just saw it. We, you we, looked we, it up? 152, which is, by the way, is way more than I thought. Yeah, and you thought yours is way more than you thought. I got 192. 192. See you guys, you're selling yourself short. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Um, I mean, is Wimby guy? I think we might got him combined. We might have him yeah, for not, sure. Not gonna have him. In, in uh, 17 years, like All Star Weekend <laughs> next year. <laughs> not even done yet on his first year. Uh, Jokic though, with the 42 points, that tied, of course, his season high. Uh, I don't even know, Lou, what's left to say. I, I watched the Denver feed last night it's when I was watching much. this game for a while. There's and just three little letters of what left to say. By the way, it's, it's, the Denver it's, feed's it's, giving it to him. You know what? I'm I'm gonna have to agree. I, I felt I felt like the I felt like the window was I felt like the window was was slim for for SGA to actually pull it off, and that was gonna come with having a one seed and carrying the team over, and them having a little slippage, him being out. You know, these are these these games are pivotal when it comes to voting and and uh, the opinion of the voters. And so Jokic having this big game uh, while SGA sits out, I think this kind of hurts my this hurts my. My position, so What's, I, I think he's the guy. The number one seed, obviously, that's the thing we've been talking about too. And they got the Hawks, the Jazz, the Spurs, the Grizzlies. They have some they cool, yeah. Bad yeah. scheduling They're coming up, <laughs> so they should probably finish with the one seed, which obviously is going to be the cherry on top for him getting it. But here's the thing: I love that the, the SGA exploded on this scene, right? Like, so I think that that helps his case. That yeah, I think the NBA and voters want someone new. They want yep. someone young in that market where that team's going to be really good for a long time. It's just hard to overlook what Jokic does consistently night in, night out with this team and this championship aspirations. If you looked right now, who has a better chance to win a championship? I think 99% of the world would say the Nuggets this year than mm -hmm. the other two, which I think that has an input. But it's crazy. We get numb to these stat lines. If SGA yeah. had this stat line, I would be like, whoa, like what a game. Jokic, I'm just like, ah, it's yeah, I'm actually another day. people that think we should do the voting and completely after the season. I For think, sure. I think I playoffs agree. should be factored into the voting as well. We always talk, like, Dirk won MVP and then he lost first round. And he, it's just like, it's, it's you got to go like back it. after for the ceremony. It's like, it just, it's, it sucks. Do you think that's a thing that they talk about yearly, like, or they're never going to change that? They're going to keep it two separate seasons, basically, the regular and the post. Yeah, I think they, they should. I think they should talk. I about think it. they. I think it should be a conversation. It's something yeah. that they consider because you 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 get to see who's really the guy right. in the playoffs. You know, especially with these guys that are leading all the way. Like Jokic, he deserves to be the Finals right. MVP. MVP, the things that he's done. But you, you know, you should give him an opportunity until the end of the season for everybody to well, be able. It's to the play. same thing for All Star, right? Like, there's people that don't make All Star, but then make like All NBA. Like Sabonis didn't make All Star, he might make All NBA. Like, it's, right. So that right. is also the, the voting starts. You can't be All NBA <laughs> and not an All Star. <laughs> the voting starts like a month into the season. It's crazy. All you have to do is have a really good first two months, and you're an NBA All Star. Correct. I know. I don't. I don't love that p pattern. By the way, I, I actually kind of hate it. Uh, here's a tough one, Chandler. If you could have only one of the two for the next five, let's do five years. Wemby or Jokic? Who are you taking? Oh, How old is Jokic? This is easy for me. I think I'm going to go Jokic just because I know what I'm going to get for the next five years. Wemby, there's still like a learning curve. There's still a process with him. There's still the worry about him getting stronger and missing games. 
29 years old, I yeah. gotta go Jokic, because yeah. I know exactly what I'm gonna get, at least for three or four of those next years, and then we might start seeing a dip with his game, the way he plays his body. Even if he loses athleticism, he's still going to be an elite player. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like he's blowing people away with his explosiveness and above the rim. Anything he's doing now at 29, he can do at 34. So I got to go Jokic. It's going to be Jokic for me as well. He's a proven winner already. I wonder if, uh, if he'll be, like, he's the kind of guy that's going to stop playing basketball earlier than we want him to, isn't he? Like, I wonder how long we'll get to see him For play. For sure. Especially also, if they win again. I got another three years. And also, he just yeah. continues to tell us he really doesn't like another, care. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. His horses are waiting. Like, yeah, his horses, his horses need to be tended to. <laughs> Let them in. So in 10 years, obviously, it's Wemby. We don't need to. And by the way, next year, when the first two months start and Wemby's an all-star and he's like the top five player in the NBA, it might change. But we just there's too much that we don't know about him yet. Future's bright. Yeah. Future's very bright. Uh, Mavs Warriors, Dallas and San Francisco. Uh, and they win 104 100 it's their fifth straight it's like they know something's up Andrew Wiggins with 23 and he also had to guard Luca uh, six of those Warriors in double figures Luca finished with a, a pedestrian 30 points 12 rebounds 11 assists it's his 20th triple double of the season and uh, their seven game win streak for Dallas it's over Luca said afterwards you can never ever count out the Warriors I mean I thought we kind of almost had reached that point, Lou, that we yeah. were starting to count them out. And now no, here we are. He, he's right. You, you, can't, you can't count these guys out. It's too much legendary history there. And the core of a lot of those moments are still there. They're on a five-game winning streak right now. What better time of the year than right now for this team to be gearing up um, to surprise some, te surprise some people? The only thing that's going to stand in the way very much like their legendary run. There are some young guys, the Jokic's of the, the, the Jokers of the world, and these young guys, they are at the beginning of creating those moments mm -hmm. for themselves. And that's the only thing that stands in front of uh, the Golden State Warriors from making one of those legendary runs is these teams are ready to make their runs themselves. Other than that, you can never count this team out. I look forward to it. Andrew Wiggins. I Andrew Wiggins, yeah. he was the key on their last championship run. He's been their key this year. With the, he hasn't played good. You, everyone knows, though, he's not a 12, 13 points per game guy. He's not a 36 or 45% you know, from the field guy. He's had his struggles majorly this year. But when he shows what he did last night, and not even the 20-plus points, he guarded Luka so good. That's Luka still got his stats, he, but he used his length. He but he only had 30 shots. points. Exactly. And you're st he's still going to get his with just the amount of ball times he has the ball. Only had 30 points. I mean, points. for him, that's awful. It's, seriously, though, but his defense. Defense was unbelievable. The way he moved without the ball, the way he got out in transition. This is the kind of energy and the spark they need from Andrew Wiggins. Because again, you can't count out Steph Curry. You know what you're going to get from him. Even Draymond, when he's playing, yeah. the team is a lot better, and he's been pretty consistent in what he brings to the table. They need Andrew Wiggins, especially with Kaminga out. We don't know when he's coming back, and he's been a bright spot. But Kaminga should be and needs to be their second most important player because he is that guy who can go give you 28 and 5 and guard the other team's best player. And I know you hate it, but give Draymond Green credit. I don't hate it. Big time, big time block. You don't love Big time defensive stance at the end <laughs> of that game to get them over, the, over that hump. These guys are gearing up. You got you to be excited for the postseason and what's to come in the play-in. You know what's crazy? As I was looking at the, I think the spread finished at like, you know, the, the Warriors were favored by one and a half or two points. Yeah. I'm looking at it, I'm like, Kaminga's out. There, I get it, they're at home. How the hell are the Warriors favored? And it's just, how, it's crazy how good they are, but that's that's the respect that the Warriors have. The people know how good they can be. People know at home. I mean, that building is pretty good. It's a fun it, it's, building. It's, I don't know. It's, that's why, this is exactly a perfect example of why if I'm a play-in, it's scary to have to play this team and just beat them one time because they can go and they can advance and they can make noise even later in that. If they get to, if they draw the Timberwolves to the Thunder. Oh man. It's gonna be tough, like it is gonna be tough. Shoot. Same thing with the Lakers, the Lakers look good. So it's it's crazy because the Western Conference is so deep. We're talking about a 10th seed You remember Warriors, when LeBron still said, so good. I know. You remember when LeBron said whoever created the play-in should be fired? Yeah, they yeah. should get a raise. That's, they probably did, they probably were Given prizes and those play-in games are going to be better than some of the first-round series. Agree, 100 so like, agree. It's all it, there's just much more on the line quickly. And by the way, for the record, Luke, I don't hate it because here's why I get so mad about the Draymond stuff. He came back in late January and they're 23 and 11 since. That's why I get irritated because I'm like, dude, why? What do you does do this irritated mean? I hate you so much. Have you seen his <laughs> pants today, Lord America? Uh, Jonathan Kaminga, he mentioned it. His fourth straight game that he's missed. Shams, when can we expect him back out there? John the Kaminga will be back on Thursday in Houston. According to Steve Kerr, obviously a massive game in, in the standings. Houston yeah. has been coming right behind uh, Golden State the last few weeks, 11 straight wins. But they're now, I believe, three games back of Golden State. 
Um, I mean, that's going to be pretty insurmountable. you got to win if you're Houston on Thursday to give yourself even a chance. But uh, Wiggins has stepped up in these four games that, that Kaminga has been out with knee tendonitis. Uh, and, and, you know, getting Kaminga back in the lineup, getting him a rhythm before the playoffs, that's going to be big for them. But I, I'm looking at the standings. Uh, a Warriors 10-9 matchup against the Lakers in that first playing game potentially. I mean, one of those teams is going to be going home way earlier than they thought. That is true because the Kings, I think, are going to struggle. I think if it ended right now, they're going to lose to Phoenix, which means the Warriors or Lakers, one of those teams are out, which sucks. Sucks for who? Whoever is out. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, Luca and Kyrie combined for 57. Um, top duos, where you got them? Middle of the pack. You and your middle of the pack. <laughs> I think they're a little better than middle of the pack. I think I mean, Tatum and Brown, you got to, they're the best team. Okay, fine. You know what I mean? Sure. Giannis and Dame are up there. Joker, Murray. I don't know. I don't know. That's I a championship know. duo. It is. What are we it, is it is. It is. So where does that put Luca and Kyrie? They're not a championship. In the upper duo. echelon. In the middle of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're in the upper That's echelon. That's it. They're in the middle of the pack. They're a top five duo. A top ah, there's KD okay, and Okay, cool. They're a top KD five duo, Book. but where do you put them? Okay, so they're worse than the middle KD of the pack then. LeBron. Yeah, well, what's the pack? How many are, is the pack? Well, if, if, they're in a the top, pack. if they're in the top five, where are they in the top five? Fifth. Oh. So they're not. So not then you're, when you were answering it, you were saying pack. What, how big was I was, the pack? I was, I was thinking, thinking of 30, maybe I was thinking a third, third or fourth. Pack. Maybe the third or fourth best duo in the league oh, right so now. You had them worse. He has them worse. He says five out of five. What I'm saying at least three. All right. That was fair. being yeah, fair. There's... Can we just show, really, I just want to show this video. I know we're going to go into a break here in a second, but this, this half court competition, I would pay money for this. Shooting them like free throws. It's just Steph and Luca having, they're like kids. I would watch this. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, make this a thing. We should have this shootout at All-Star Weekend, too. Right, Shams? Like, let's make this happen. <laughs> no, I don't like how friendly they are before the game. I really I, don't. But I, I also, will. But I, yeah. I, do like the, I do like this for the fans, especially that are there early. I also like those shoes. Those were good shoes. Not Skechers. They were not Skechers. Got it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Shams, love you, mean it. Uh, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow. And when we come back, oh, no. Ryan Rosillo, George. Ryan. There he is. With an E. God only knows where he's coming from right now. He's coming from his kitchen. Well, I haven't seen this dude in forever. You just did his podcast. Lou, have you met Ryan Rosillo yet? I have not. Well, good. Then we're Virtually, about to have, have an introduction right now from the Ryan Rosillo podcast and a thousand other things. Who are we kidding? Rosillo is here. What's up, buddy? Good to see you again. I this know. Has been a minute. It's the last I time was... I saw you. We were at ESPN, and I remember you came on to Sports Nation, and they were like, he doesn't have enough energy. I'm like, that's who he is. He's just a dry dude. Like, let him live. That's what you said about him? No, I didn't say it. Oh. it and then he and I talked about <laughs> no, it and mocked everybody right, that bro. said it. it True or false, Ryan Rosillo has been to my house in Malibu for a party. True. Uh, well, kind of false, because <laughs> I think I got there after the party had been going on for 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. my God. That checks yeah. out. That checks yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Chandler, it was so bad, Chandler left his own house. Yeah. So uh, I remember I, I brought a, a friend, shall ooh, we say, ooh. Yeah. and I was like, this house is sick, great dude, a lot of cool people, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and Chandler and I's mutual buddy was, like, talking it up, and she was like, all right, this is going to be great, big car service. <laughs> SUV black. Oh, yeah, wow. Obviously. You dirty dog. Up. Yeah, so I was like, I'm doing this up huge, and it looked like a bomb went off. <laughs> and then Chandler left. So you she's left like, you're friends with these guys? I don't know. No, no. Do you trust people in your house? I would steal something if I knew you were. Yeah, I trust it. Go on. By the way, for so the record, Chandler was fine. It was yeah. just, like, everything else going on, it was over. If it, it was, yeah, over. if it's a weekend, yeah. it's a three-day party. It's come and go as you please. Lou, have you been to one of these parties? I have not. I have not either. Because now I'm a working man. I'm I a father. Not. Yeah, 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 whatever. We're sick and tired of you. Uh, all right, so let's get to some hoops talk here, because Embiid made the big return last night, which is still shocking to everyone on this panel that he's already back. But he had 24 points. They make it out of the play-in. They're getting Boston or Milwaukee. <laughs> Can we be hyped for this? What kind of a chance are you giving it? Well, it's a lot more fun than watching what they've been uh, since he was gone because they've just been terrible. Uh, I think they've tried to piece it together as much as they possibly can. But last night was interesting for a few different reasons, right? Because they were subbing him in and out with that game mattering. You know, they could have just said, all right, fine. He got back. He got his run. 
Um, it's it's clear. I don't care what Nick Nurse said about his conditioning. I mean, it's just it's just not realistic that he would be back and close to peak conditioning for him because he's a big guy. He hasn't like playing in a real basketball game is completely different than all the work that you would do leading up to it. So uh, he had a couple big shots. Uh, I actually thought he was a little passive, which is understandable. But going up against Boston or Milwaukee this late in the game, like Boston has a lot of things they can throw at him. I, I think Boston, with the history of those two teams, would welcome it. So the name brand part of that being the first round matchup, you're like, wait, this isn't what's supposed to happen. You're getting back the NBA's MVP in the first round. But I just don't know if those two teams would be afraid of what we saw last night unless it gets a lot better in the next two weeks. Yeah, I think just that as a teammate of Joel's, I think that does give us that boost, that confidence that, mm -hmm. okay, any given night we have Joel Embiid, we can feed him, we can dominate him. The seven games, is that enough for him to get in good, good shape? That I don't know, but I said, Ryan, I've torn my meniscus four times. The fact that he's back playing 30 minutes, doing what he did last night, after just missing nine weeks was the most impressive thing to me. And yeah, his cardio is going to come. He's going to turn the ball over. He's going to be a little passive, like you said. But the fact that he's on the floor to me gives them at least that the season's not just a waste. You know what I mean? Like now at least we have a team we can go to war with in the postseason, no matter who we play. If it's the Celtics, so it's a, it's a big mountain to climb. But at least now we have the confidence yeah. with Joel Embiid going. But on, a, on the flip side of that, think about what you're, if you're the Boston Celtics, what are you thinking? You're like, well, damn. I, are you I, thinking? I put this I put this team in a position to be one of the best in the league this year, only to be rewarded with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey for the first round of, this, of the playoffs. Like you change, he's changing the whole dynamic of the playoff look. Yeah, Ryan. If you're the Celtics, would you rather the yeah. Miami Heat or the Philadelphia 76ers? Because they're right. probably yeah. going to get one of those two after having a hell of a season. Yeah, I know. I mean, you would think, and, and you guys can answer this a lot better than I can, but I'd always like to think, like, if you think anything of yourself, if you have any kind of personal pride, <laughs> knowing that you blew that series to Miami, because I still, like, I think that Eastern Conference Finals outcome is still one of the most surprising playoff series I've ever seen, <laughs> because Miami just punked them for three straight games. It's like, Boston, you're like, you're really going to let this happen? And then Boston wakes up. They get it to 17 and turns the ankle. So you would think, like, yeah, no, actually, we want those guys again yeah. because we want to prove what happened last year. But the difficult thing about um, I'm getting emotional about it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Play it cool. Play it cool. <laughs> Play it cool. <laughs> Stay cool. Deep breaths. All right. All right. I watched the Heat for, what, five, six months, and then it's like, okay, none of that mattered. Like, the team I watched last night against New York, where most of their guys are back, and Butler's defending Brunson, and now Kalen Martin's back in there, and Jovic, who I have a sneaky love for. Uh, like, I watched that game against New York, who's missing all of their other guys, and were like, wait, would this be a four seed if they had played like this the entire time? So I still think Miami would be the more challenging basketball team than Philadelphia, because I don't know why it's going to look so much better in two weeks. Uh, but you would think there'd be some lingering personal pride from athletes after what happened last year to Boston losing in the Easter Conference Finals. Yeah, and any time there's like a banged up team all year long and you just know Miami, at some point they're going to get Tyler Hero back. Now they got Martin back, you know. They're getting Jimmy Butler back. So it's like at some point this team's going to be full strength and I don't want to play them in the first round. But given as either. a competitor of you know what happened in the past, yeah, I'm a little more juiced up than playing, you know, a banged up Philly. Uh, well... Well, but me, also, I want to survive in advance, too, and just play Orlando in the second round. So, that, <laughs> yeah. so whatever's the easiest path also would be kind of nice. We give Miami a lot of credit because they usually turn it on at the end of the season, and they become one of those teams that you don't want to run into. But pre-Joel Embiid injury, Philadelphia was a top three team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. So to run into them with Joel Embiid back for the first round of the playoffs, I think, in my personal opinion, that's a scarier matchup. Yeah. Just selfishly as a fan and people that we're, we're all going to be watching, I, I love everything about what's happening right now. That's I'll tell you this, whoever Philly plays the first round, if Joel yeah. Embiid wasn't playing, I probably wouldn't watch that series at all. They'd and get now. Swept. Exactly. Now with Joel Embiid, at least it's spicy. It's, it changes everything. Let's talk Celtics for a second, Rosillo, because they are, it, it's just a crazy team, and I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when they're watching Joel come back and they're like, damn it. But they got the best record. And then Jason Tatum takes a lot of heat, uh, predominantly clutch time critiquing. Where are you on, on what he's done, what he can do? What are his limitations, if any? Just a real quick thing. I think with the history of the playoffs and beat, Boston's like, whatever. Really? Seriously. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think they think Embiid's easier to guard in the playoffs than the other top guys in the league. Than Miami. So yeah. uh, I, just, I just think it's harder for a traditional center to, to destroy you in those late possessions, um, but as we're talking, I don't late think anything is traditional about Joel Embiid. I I feel you, but 
Joel Embiid, it, like, that's not traditional to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, I mean, if, if we're going George Mike and you got me. <laughs> no, not, not that traditional. <laughs> no, we'll, we won't go that back. <laughs> we won't go that far. Uh, yeah, but also, right. no. who on the You're Celtics ride? Who on the Celtics ride? Perzingis ain't guarding Joel in the half court offense. Horford, so Horford they're going to be double does. teaming. So these guys like Oubre, Harris, are going to get a lot of more open shots than they have the last nine weeks. Horford does, I, I, I can't believe he's still doing this, okay? I, I know. But he does an incredible job of like just making everything, all the work before the catch and the setup. He just does a better job against Embiid than other people have done. I think that's why the Sixers were motivated to sign him as a free agent years ago. And here we are like five, six years later, and he's, he's still giving them good minutes. Yeah. Um, you're right, Porzingis one on one, like nobody's going to handle Embiid one on one. I would just say I've noticed stuff I feel like late with him in some of those big possessions where he needs to be set up to get into position mm. or he needs to be set up to get that catch at the free throw line, which is a layup for him. Um, but there, there's, it's just a little bit harder for him than say like a list of two or three other perimeter guys that can kind of get the ball and just go. Yeah. Um, at least that's the way I, you know, look, we may just disagree about it, but I don't think Boston's going to go, Oh no, we have to play him again when, They've had a pretty good track record against them in the playoffs. See, and to me, the Celtics, their issue. Like, who's their, stopping Boston? Well, their weakness was their depth to right. me. But the fact that they went through a whole regular season, they're 59 and 16 with Pritchard and Hauser and Horford as their only three real rotational bench players is nuts. So everyone knows getting into the postseason it shortens anyway. So now I think that's almost an advantage to them because now guys are really going to, teams are just going to go seven, eight deep anyway. So now I mm. think that as that weakness turns into a strength because those guys are proven, those guys are ready, they've gotten all the reps all year long. And they're healthy, and they've been healthy, which helps a lot. Who's stopping well, you them? Want me to, go ahead. Um, like, look, the, the late game stuff, though, Michelle, you're asking me about, like, yeah. I see it, too. Because, you know, the, if you dig into all the numbers, and, I, and we did this with Bill on Sunday, there's not really, like, this number that jumps out. Like, oh, in 2020 they did this, but then the late game they did this, or their playoff efficiency and offense went down a hill. And you're like, you know, it's all kind of pretty steady, like, 22 was probably more about defense. Um, but I've looked at all the clutch numbers. I think it's more of an eye thing than something that's looked at in the number because they only have, like, after the All-Star break, eight games that qualify as clutch. But I do think they get a little isolation, jab step, triple threat happy where Tatum and Jalen are so good at making absurd shots that they kind of default to that. But the byproduct of that becomes that everybody's just standing around watching to see if the shot is going to go in and they make themselves easier to defend. So this is an historically accomplished statistical regular season team. But I think some of that lingering stuff that those of us that have watched them a lot were like, hey, is that going to be enough not just to get out of the East, but to beat, say, a Denver in the finals, because I thought that was a very clear difference between the execution of those two teams when they played twice this year. But right, So right now, would you take the Celtics or would you take the field just to get out of the East? I'd take the Celtics over the yeah. field, but I wouldn't take them over Denver. Yeah, me neither. That sounds, that sounds fair, right? I mean, the fact that they're 32-32 and three at home, yeah. too, which is, the, the, they're, like you said, sometimes we see Tatum take these, like, it's like Luca When you see him take this 35-foot step back <laughs> three at the end and he misses it, it's like, what the fuck? What, what, yeah. what kind Especially of, what, when teams are going on runs. Why yeah, it's like, like, why you, are you taking yeah. the shot? So when you see Tatum that's and true. Brown, they get to their mid-range to do it, that's a low-efficient shot, right? That's a low-percent shot. So, But when he makes it, it's a hero. What a crazy mm -hmm. shot. But most of the time, it's not a high, it's, it's, it's not a good shot. Live by it, die by it. Yeah. They're a jump shooting basketball team. They like they like shooting jump shots and they like shooting three pointers. They're gonna live and die by it. Even when teams go on a six to eight point run, you would think they'll come down, get something flowing where the ball will move side to side. No, this team plays ISO basketball and they're gonna live by it and die by it. And that's what we <laughs> wait to see in the postseason. I can't wait to hear your take on Draymond Green because the fourth ejection of the season just happened. Um, <clears throat> it was so egregious that I think he finally lost Lou as a staunch defender, <laughs> at least this week. It was the first time it has happened. So where are you? Are you reading Kerr and Curry as just like, they gotta be over it, but they gotta also stand by their dude? Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's standing by him. I think it's, uh, you know, sometimes you do everything as a parent. I don't know what that's like, but you, you know, your kid <laughs> just sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just go like, we tried, we did a lot of stuff. We bought him stuff, we deprived him of stuff. We tried all these different angles, we read books and you know, he's just, He's not going to listen to us, just, you know. So I think the, the stuff that's really frustrating about Draymond is I think his personality is really important to this entire run. 
Um, I've always felt like every team needs one guy that's going to kind of live in the gray area and, and fight for you emotionally because the rest of the Golden State Warriors over these years have been kind of passive personalities. I mean, they're great. There's a bunch, a bunch of my favorite players I've ever watched, but they needed Draymond to be this kind of emotional fuel for them throughout a lot of this stuff. So I think that was kind of the agreement <laughs> where they all understood hey, we need to let him go a little bit further because this is just who he is. I remember I interviewed him after the 16 finals in person in Toronto at the All-Star events. And I was like, is there any part of you that regrets, you know, what happened in 16 and really the finals turning on that? He was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't have 70 million if I acted like you or something like that. And I mean, he wasn't actually being a jerk about it to me, but he was basically saying like, I am wired this way. This is what you get. And that's why I have all this money in the bank. And I've got it. So I don't think that he's ever really felt like he has to be more accountable. Like all of us want to be more I think accountable. I, yeah. I think he, had, I think he finally that. said it on, on his own podcast, though. He said, I might have cost us a championship in, in 2016. I, I believe that's what he said on his podcast. So what does he believe? Because he says one thing, he says another thing. Absolutely. What, what is what? Well, what yeah. What's up? My, my thing is, it's all fun and games. He is the emotional leader. He's the, he is that heartbeat. He is that yeah. toughness. But it's, when you're not on the floor for your team, all that shit goes out the window. So if, the, if you, yes, you, you are that emotional leader and you are the tough guy in the locker room and Clay and Steph, as great as they are, they are kind of passive and they're super nice guys, but they're <laughs> not going to be the guys to jump you in practice. They're not going to be the guys to check Coach, you know, Steve Punch Kerr. Punch you in the face. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, 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 they're not that. But when it comes to this level where now he's missing games, and as Steph Curry, as Steve Curry, you realize that we are a much better team when he is on the floor. That's where then I'm pissed off. That's when Steph Curry yeah. is literally crying again. on the court. Because where sure. there's 23 and 11 since he's back, that's a huge difference than the bad product they were putting without him. So his yeah. value is more important than his his attitude and his toughness. That, that, that doesn't matter to me if he's not able to play because he's suspended doing dumb shit. Agreed. End of the day, Jordan Poole's not the only player that got punched this year, last year. Trust me, he was the only one that somebody leaked the tape. <laughs> Trust me. You mean punched by Draymond? Or There's a hot take. It was like a serial Whoa. puncher last year. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. How many of you have you seen get punched in the face? You know what's crazy? The crazy. Hold I saw on. Omri Caspi How and Garrett teams? Temple beat each other, and there was no video <laughs> of it. That's a duo. That, that's what I'm saying. The, the guys problem is the video getting leaked. It's not the problem. Somebody gets punched. <laughs> oh, you're not saying Draymond's punched no, like 30 games no. last year. He been not. Because that would have been a story. <laughs> no, that, no, no, yeah, no. that's what I was like. Can I go no. Well, there is probably 25 <laughs> other altercations that with yeah. Draymond, with anyone else, that if it was on tape, we would, we would really be mind blown. I know. What are we not seeing? But side note, this the Omri Caspi Garrett what, Temple the fight was the craziest. That's the weirdest <laughs> duo I've ever. Heard. Why would yeah, they be mad Garrett at Garrett Temple's it? like the nicest guy in the world. And Omri, Ka it's, it was crazy. What it was, was after the deal? like a loss that we were in Memphis. It was after a loss, and I'm talking like blows, punching each other in the face to where like we were so caught up, we didn't even break it up. We were just like watching, and then finally we <laughs> it was like out. hockey. But it was a crazy fight. It was literally a hockey fight. I kind of love that. You let, so you let him breathe. If that video came out, it would have been uh, that's so all I'm viral. Saying. People get punched every day, B. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Lou, Lou is the Caspi worst. Caspi wasn't a big rebounder, right? Caspi? <laughs> <laughs> you can't even break it up. Oh, let me ask you this. Warriors, Lakers, we got the whole play-in situation. Either yeah. one of those, in your opinion, a viable option to, to make a deep run? Both? I don't know. This is the most clueless I think I've ever been entering <laughs> the West. Seriously. I know. Like, I like so many of these teams, and I'm like, all right, I can find the argument, right? I can find the argument against them. Like I got asked the other day, I was like, okay, after Denver, because mm. I think Denver, it makes sense to default to Denver. Um, and that's with Murray back because they have a really hard time with guys on the ball creating on their own. There's just not a lot of those guys. And, and when Jokic comes out now, you know, you can just see that the offense has struggled a little bit. So anyway, when I look at the matchup part of it, like I think Minnesota with the way they've handled the Clippers, with the way they can have Gobert, cover Gordon in the dunker spot, and then Denver tries to have Gordon bring Gobert away, and they just ignore it. And they're like, fine, you want to shoot corner threes? Just Aaron, do it. That means Jokic isn't shooting the basketball. Like, I like Minnesota as, as another option, but I know you could come back at me and kill me on the late offense. What is the thing that you trust? What does it look like with Cat coming back if he's coming back late and all that kind of stuff? So when you start factoring Golden State LA into it, like Golden State's been, I mean, actually both these teams have been really good since you look at these record points. But I think it's an awful matchup for Golden State. Like last year in the playoffs, you just went, "This is this is impossible." 
we're, ta- too we're talking size. which of those teams make a run. One of those teams aren't getting out of the play-in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So one of the- which is weird to Yeah, like, imagine. I don't think they're catching Phoenix, and Phoenix is going to, you know, Phoenix, Sacramento, and then one of those teams are out. So it's- Do you guys like Phoenix? Dude, I'm so scared of Phoenix. I, I love Phoenix. Really? I thought they've been so. I thought they were so, you know, underperforming. But I've I'm said it all year long. <laughs> I think they have it all. I think the pickup of like a Royce O'Neal <clears throat> is great. Nurkic still constantly have 15 and 15. Nobody talks about that. Beal's been a little bit of a roller coaster, inconsistent. But when you have that much offensive firepower and you have Grayson Allen now having a career year Ugh, shooting what three, what a world we live in. They have so many weapons offensively. Where to me. That's scary. Minnesota had a great year. OKC had a great year, but I'm not scared to play them in the posting because I haven't seen them do it before. I haven't so seen KD it. is why I, you. So, I've seen those. I've seen Devin Booker do it. I've seen Kevin Durant do it. So those guys, ha- their, their resume scares me more than. But you I don't care about the regular them season. Do it together. That's no. That's my and they've problem. been super inconsistent. I yeah, just know what this, they're capable of. There we go. Well, wait, Ryan, why did you go. ask? Because are you are you not buying them? I had a really hard time, and I know it's one game, but the rematch against the Spurs where they lost. You mean the three of the four they Yama. lost? I love it so much. Yeah, or that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, they were a team where I was like, I don't really care what the record is. I don't care what the seed is. I don't care what all the numbers are. Same. Like Those guys haven't played enough g- games together. Like Once they roll it out. Like I love Booker. He <laughs> is one of my favorite players of the last few years. It wasn't immediate with him. But just the way he is and he goes about his business, like I wish more basketball players just as soon as they stepped on the court were like that guy. I, I think he has that thing that you need to to just raise your game to another level. And we've at least seen with the the run in 21. And we're like, OK, there's something there as opposed to some of these other players that I love that, you know, I think there's always a moment of, oh, is that guy comfortable right now? Like, I remember Shea Gilgis Alexander in that run with the Thunder where they went to the Rockets with seven games and it was Chris Paul and it was Schroeder. Like, SGA, granted, he was younger. He wasn't the first option. You're like, I don't know if he's entirely comfortable out there. And now I would never even think that of him um, going, you know, because the team is his and all these different things. So with Phoenix, they check all these boxes, but I, I feel like I gave up in the last week. And their closing schedule is absurd. Yep. When you look at everybody they're going to play their schedule's before the regular schedule sucks. it's, yeah. it's <laughs> unbelievable yeah. how bad it is. Yeah, somebody somebody was mad. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Ryan on this one. Like, you just, they they haven't had that that firepower that you would expect from, from the talent that they have on paper. I hadn't seen them put one of those runs together where I'm like, yo, this is going to be a dangerous basketball team come postseason. It's just so many so many inconsistencies in how they play and how they defend. It just worries me sometimes. Minnesota 52 and 23, Phoenix 44 and 31. If they play in the playoffs, I think I'm taking the Suns. I mean, when series. you put it like that, it is an interesting Yeah, you know I mean, like, I don't care about their regular season record. I, I, I really the don't. The numbers are the numbers. I'm just, I'm, I'm a vibe guy. I ain't feeling the vibe. vibe. Yeah, I'm not feeling the the vibes. Yeah, we got vibes and visions. (laughs) Suns and four. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that kid back. We're gonna get that kid back. And I'm all four. They might sweep them. I think, like a few weeks ago, I probably would have gone with you on this. I know. And, and by the way, this is what we're getting. We're yeah. getting. And then I'm, I'm waiting around for like the Clippers, and they're just gonna go, "Hey, we showed you what we needed to do for two months, and now we're gonna stink." With yeah, me and Lou. Defense. Me and Lou are <laughs> hot on the Clippers Lou. now. They've shit. The I bed. think I'm still there. So still we there. we agree again. It's so many of these teams in the West that I really really like that it's just it's all over the. You place. guys should exchange numbers on this show. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, what about Dallas? Like, I know yeah, Dallas, Dallas is scary. Night, but... Dallas is scary. That's what, look at what we're doing. We've named ten Taylor teams. Now. I know. They're, and they're all many. good. They're all deep. And they all can beat you any given night. It's Dallas is one of those great. teams I can't get with. But Chandler loves them. Same. The I can't get with Dallas. it. By the way, I just want to fast forward to the playoffs. Um, on the MVP thing, Lou's had SGA. Had him since before the season even started. Chandler's got Jokic. You actually have a vote. Where are you leaning? And if it is yeah. Jokic and he gets his third... Yeah. Is he is he best of all? I mean, I know Tony Kukoc has his opinion, but Which where are you? Re- Which is a stupid. ridiculous take. Uh, <laughs> what was it? I missed that he one. Was, you ex players, man. You guys get he, mad at us, the like media. You, you've been on fire the last year. Kukoc even... went nuts. Jokic isn't on the level of Vlade. And, he wasn't top uh, five. He's someone else. So, some <laughs> Dino Tony Raja. So Jokic is, is good, and all the stats are cool, but he's nowhere near as good stats as Dino are cool. Raja. <laughs> That was a that was a real uh, 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 quote. Cool, bro. <laughs> but um, it reeks of wow. old school. Wait, you get a vote, Ryan? Okay, what can we? Can Look at that. Yeah, he just what? Got, he just said Thanks, it. Chandler. You seem excited about it. <laughs> yeah, <he does. laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. 
<laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Do we get a vote? Come no, on, No, we don't get a vote. We're not real. Uh, I just got it. <laughs> I, I, didn't get it. I didn't get it until after I left the ESPN. That's the best part. So that was the weirdest. Like, all these things that have happened to me post ESPN. It was like, oh, is that because of ESPN? It was like, no, I actually, as soon as I left, <laughs> I, I was gone. Like, Everything I, was good. I don't really get it either. Uh, <laughs> no, I think somebody in the office was like, do you know how many games this loser watches? That's like, just. You should you know, get like, a vote, though. Think about people who do. Like, you should get a vote. Do you? How hard do you think about it? Or you already know? You're like, I've, I already, I've had it. Last year, I, I really had a hard time with it. Okay. You know, because I think it's, it is really important. Yeah. You know, you're, uh, as a, a vote last year too. No. <laughs> Just really shut up. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> He's never been more impressed by a human being in his life. I don't know if it's that. I feel like there's a tad like, mm, all right, you know. No. When you started bringing up the Ku Coach thing, I started bringing up the globe, being like, let me try to figure out <laughs> what's going on and why, why they're dumping on Jokic so bad. Uh, last year, I struggled with it. I really, really struggled. I ended up going with Embiid. Um, I didn't, but I just tried to make the vote the vote because last year there was so much bullshit going on, just warring tribes on that that was so frustrating because mm. I felt like you just had to be so dismissive of either one of the players to make your point. And I just didn't think that's what it was. And I thought the way MB closed and Jokic in Denver was kind of like over it and you could try to go the whole season. So anyway, having said that, I have no hesitation with Jokic this year. Like <laughs> not, there's no way I, there's no way he could wear a t-shirt that says Ryan Rosillo sucks <laughs> warm ups. And <laughs> there's just no way I'd be voting any for anybody else. It really comes down to Luca and Giannis two, three for me, which makes Lou probably upset that I don't wow. have this yeah. no, well, well, today I conceded. Today I conceded. I thought the only way that he could possibly pull it off if if they finished the season with that with the one seed and him being the leader of that and with some slippage, I think they go in, they're in third today or something of that nature. It could change in two days. But I mean, Lou, yeah, he said could, Luka and Giannis are his two and three. I didn't hear SGA. I'm, I'm going to bypass that part. And not Tatum, but, but no, love, but no a, love for Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people that like Giannis as well. Giannis is a sleeper pick. Sup uh, I, I just feel like there's almost like we're so used to it now. that Like, I almost voted Giannis last year. Really? Yeah. Number one. Yeah. It's like we're just, I, it's just he's there. He's in, he's in our subconscious all the time. But yeah, like he doesn't have the, the, I'm sorry, Michelle. I, yeah, just, no, it's, I think it's because sometimes Giannis, and I, I think the guys that played, like, do like he just gets it and goes through everybody. There isn't, like, we had that thing this season where, like, wh where's the bag? Where's the bag? Like, I don't know, man. Whatever it is, it works. And yeah. I love that he's up for it every single night. That's the thing about Giannis. I think he's mad. Ryan, Jokic's just schedule. They got the Hawks, the Jazz, the yeah. Spurs, the Grizzlies. Like they're gonna get the one seed too. Yes, he is. Stamps is. Well, that Spurs thing's not a given, so let's slow down. Um, let's talk. <laughs> You're right, because it's the last second. game, and nobody will play. <laughs> I know, maybe not. Uh, they've been fighting the Chet Holmgren Rookie of the Year thing basically all season. Although that's weakened a little bit. It's Wemby's, right? I mean, who cares what the team record well, is? Go ahead, Ryan. I, I I hate Rookie of the Year being factored in by like. Oh, those games mattered more. Same. Um, like, Chet, Chet can have a game where he doesn't even have, like, I like Chet, so I don't want to argue against Chet. Yep. But Chet's role and responsibility on this team is completely different than when Benyama's and Victor's the better player. Yeah. But See, I, I think we, we turned the corner on Wimby again. The things he's 19 doing. 19 wins, though. I just it, think when, yeah, so we're not looking at all wins. at wins and losses in this only award. Everything else, all star, MVP, wins matter. Rookie of the year doesn't. Right. You're a rookie. You're just doing it. But it's new. just, it's crazy when it's a draft. Like, okay, we're talking about the best team, arguably, in the West and the worst team in the West. Who, what do you, you don't think Chet will put up those numbers on the Spurs and still get that many wins? You almost no. had a quadruple double and lost. On the flip side, though, how hard, good would the Thunder be if Wimby was on the Thunder? This is what it's been all season. It's just hard. I mean, it's, just, like, it's, it's mesmerizing, but it's just hard to root for if we when can, it comes to winning. And, yeah, if we can agree that winning does not matter, fine. Wimby, by far, is the That's better it. player, better future, and he has had a hell of a year. Fine. Winning just That's does it. not matter. A lot of these big numbers have come with losses. That's all we say. Most of them. Right, and he also had like three months where no one on the team could throw him an entry pass. Yeah. Okay, but, hey, so, like. <laughs> but Chet is literally possibly a number one seed, Ryan. That does, that's got to count for something. It's, it's coming. Now. It's coming, Ryan. Um, we, this has been awesome. I hope you'll come back on again. Was it Bill that said he, when he watches Wimby, he feels like he's in a dream? <laughs> is that him? I think so, yeah. although he lost his mind. I mean, I'm glad we're leaving now before I get to say, I'm, think, I'm flirting with Wimby for Defensive Player of the Year. Yes! Oh. All right, I'll come back. This is all, I love this so much. All right, uh, this has been great. It's been good to catch up. Talk soon. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. it, Ryan. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Run it up.
the running back, running back, run it up, running back. Revoke. <laughs> Guys, we we can't finish the show and not show this. Oh, oh this gracious little <laughs> moment. <laughs> it really is crazy to do in a game. With like five minutes left. Right? I mean, they're up, what are they up, 20? Still. Yeah. By the way, is that considered Actually, disrespectful? It's not considered disrespectful because whoever this guy is had an opportunity to play defense. He yeah, decided not to. You know what's crazy? And he, here's the highlight. He fully gave up. The number. Yeah, he gave up. That's fun. That's, that's not Jackson Hayes' problem, but... I would lose my mind if I was at that game. That's silly. That's a Toronto Raptors problem. It is you, should be mad at, you should be mad at your own team. Look at the look, bench reaction. Look at number so, two. Dancing, yeah, on, dancing on your dancing on your grave. He's there. Also, those Toronto uniforms, everything's throwing me off with the color scheme. On those the are the Drake uniforms. uniforms. I don't love it. I don't. That's well, a also, weird my man just did a, a through the legs dunk in an NBA game. It's pretty sick. What did you just get it? Yeah, I mean it's nuts. <laughs> it took All me right, a while. Chandler, just figure out what we, we're looking at. Uh, that's gonna <laughs> do for us. It's a hard today. dunk to do. Tyler Hansbro, Malik Rose on the show tomorrow. Ooh, Have two a great guests. Wednesday. Double guest. <laughs> run it up, run it back, 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 run it up, and run it back, run it back.